Also, please place your appearances on the record. Jody Doak appearing on behalf of Anjulia Kopenki Phillips. Mr. Barge, do you have an attorney on this matter? Yes, I do. So can I can I explain why I think he's not here? Sure. Um, I called him yesterday on this. He had set a motion regarding parenting time for this same day and time as the show cause. I, and then he re reference is he, is he, I would ask we hold on one second, uh, or I can sit here, but my computer was doing an update on Zoom. It should only oh, take a second. There okay. he is. Um, yeah, it'll be one second. He Robbie's in my office, but my the update should be done. That's what the delay is. I apologize. All right. All right, no problem. I apologize to everyone. Zoom is a little does these updates if you don't log on the day before sure. sometime. All right, so we are here today um, on a show cause against Mr. Margie. I know there is also another future motion coming our way. Um, That'll probably just... I'm sorry to interrupt, referee. That'll probably be just about the taxes because um, I was uh, I thought initially that your recommendation was in order because uh, Wayne County down here signs all the referee recs on an interim basis, but I guess yours wasn't. So that one's probably just going to be about taxes that day. Okay. So as to the show cause, um, do you believe we need a hearing on that issue? Well, I, I I saw Miss Doak was speaking. I didn't mean to interrupt her. I, I'll defer to her for a moment to let her um, um, say what she was saying, and then um, I'm not sure what she was saying, and then I'll comment That's, on it. I already said I was wrong about that. That was a procedural thing. You you can go ahead with regards to whether or not you feel you need a, a hearing on the show cause. I guess, or it's up to the judge. Which I mean, judge, who do you want to go first here? Well, I mean, we don't have time obviously to take the evidence today, so if there's no resolution on this matter. Um, then I think what we need is an evidentiary hearing. Yes, we sir. have we have one. Uh, Ms. I had filed a motion to move the. Uh, we have an evidentiary hearing on Miss Doak's objection to your recommendation. Um, I filed a motion set for next week. I'm hoping that doesn't have to go because Miss Doak and I already talked to the judge's uh, clerk or secretary to uh, agree to move it to the next day, um, which would be May 17th. The order hasn't been signed yet, and and. Jody, that's why I left it on the calendar, just because, you know, hopefully that'll be signed in the next uh, day or two. But um, I don't, so I don't know. It seems kind of maybe we should wrap it all up in that date with the judge on the 17th or the 16th. But it's it's going to be moved from the 16th. So one way or the other. But uh, Miss Doak and I, like I said, we stipulated um, to move it to the next day. It's But that's May, not April. In front of the judge, we're on May sixteenth right now, but we stipulated to move it to May seventeenth. Well, I, I would think uh, I have to do the, this. The, to, hold on, but do the show cause in front of me as opposed to skipping that stage and going to the judge, unless the judge agreed to that. Um, but I think what we do need to do then is set this matter. You know, we would just be addressing the show cause. So, counsel, do you think an hour is sufficient? I do, and uh, hopefully we can do it via Zoom. Ms. Doak, do you think an hour is sufficient? Um, I think so. Okay. I'd prefer to come in myself to be there if we're going to take evidence. Sure, you're certainly welcome to come. Would you have a problem if the other attorney appeared by Zoom given his distance, or do you have an objection to that? Um, I don't have a, I don't have a problem with him appearing by Zoom. Okay. So I don't have a hour slot until, well, June 12th at 11 a.m. Here's my, here's one of my thoughts and maybe, maybe this would be, um, helpful. Um, one of the primary issues in the motion that is pending regarding custody and parenting time before the court is the constant refusals of parenting time by Mr. Bargy and the alienation of my client from her children. This is a continued 
effort in that regards. He continues to deny parenting time. And it's going to be a subject of the hearing in front of the judge coming up um, on May 16th, whether or not we take evidence in front of you or not, because it's an issue in that case. So I would stipulate to set the show cause directly in front of the judge if the other party would, if you would be comfortable with it. Simply for that reason, I think it would be more judicially economical because we're going to hear the issues anyway. What I'll do is set this matter for June 12th at 11. The parties can certainly prepare a stipulation together to ask that it be heard at that other hearing, which would make sense, but I don't want to tie the judge's hands to that if it hasn't gone through the referee phase yet, but he may certainly be willing to do that since, as you indicate, you know, I'm assuming the evidence would be cumulative and dealt with there. Yes. So we'll set it for June 12th, but obviously parties, if you prepare a stipulation and submit it to the judge and he agrees to hear that matter as part of that hearing, um, then we would just cancel the June 12th hearing for this matter. Yeah. And Thank you. For Ms. Uh, uh, Doak, I, I have no problem uh, signing any order regarding that. I object to what she said, the basis, but um, but I'm not going to get into that argument today. We don't want to waste the court's time. But if but I have no problem doing it in front of the judge. All right. Thank you. So the parties will work on doing that. If that doesn't happen in front of the judge, then we'll handle it on June 12th at 11 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Right. We have the parties on that matter present. Yes, they are. Yes, sir. All right. And Mr. Copenhaver, this is your objection to a child support recommendation. Is that correct? Yeah. They have me having the kids for 22 days, which I actually have, or 22 nights, which I actually have them more than that, like 120. Because I get them six weeks out of summer every other weekend. <laughs> Ms. Erickson, what is your position as to the number of overnights? Um, the boys reside with me majority of the time. Uh, like Dylan said, every other weekend they go to his mom's and then also for six weeks in the summer from our last court order that we had done. All right. So they go to him overnight or they go to his mother? Correct. I live with my mother. Okay. All right. Oh, I, I, that last I knew he didn't. So I, I apologize for that. To be honest, I do everything with his mom. Dylan and so I don't have contact. It's every other weekend and six weeks in the summer. Is that what you said, ma'am? Yes, sir. His okay. mother and I meet in Bay City every other weekend. Yes, sir. So do you have any objection then to changing the overnights to reflect the actual amount that overnights are being, um, the actual amount of overnights that he has? No, sir. I do have a question, though, um, in regarding if the boys wanted to play sports or anything like that, how would I go about organizing that? Because that has been an issue. Um, like my one son wanted to play baseball and everything. I had talked to the school district um, and was like, you know, even though they won't be able to be at all of them, I would still pay. But then they explained to me that, you know, if they can't be at majority of the practices or games, they're not guaranteed to play. So that's kind of been an issue. Um, so I just was curious, how do I go about that? If there's not something agreeable, if the kids want to do a sport and there's not something agreeable for us to like adjust weekends or anything like that, how would we go about doing something with that? You would have to file a motion if the parties are unable to reach an agreement. Okay. All right, so I will um, grant the objection. We will prepare a new recommendation based on every other weekend and six weeks in the summer. Okay. All right, thank you both for appearing. That does conclude the matter. You'll get a new uh, recommendation sent to you. If you think there's any errors on that one, you'll have another chance to object to that also, okay? Okay, thank you. On that matter, thank you. I am. Um... All right, we do have the plaintiff present. I know that she's working on it. Uh, she just texted me uh, saying that she's like 10 minutes ago saying that she's having issues with Zoom. So she will be on. All right. So this is your objection to a child support review or recommendation. No, and not your objection. Not necessarily an objection. It's more of a parenting times objection. I mean, and both Emily and I have 
briefly talked, but we wanted to uh, have a court order for mediation, both of us. She just had a baby, so we only talked very, very briefly. So, and I wanted to give her a chance to actually have a conversation with me before we file a motion, but she wanted it to be a court order. All right, we're set for nine o'clock. It is 9.15. She is... She just not texted me, she's getting on. Not made herself present yet. Your paperwork indicates objection to child support review. Oh, I didn't, I guess I filed the wrong thing then, didn't I? It would look that way, yes. Okay, I apologize. That was not the intentions. All right, well, I've got to move forward with the rest of my docket, so then I'll just simply uh, recall this matter at a later time. Yes, sir. Your Honor, she's right here. I just brought her in from the waiting room. All right, I'm moving on to the next cases. We have either party on that matter present. I'm present. Hello. All right, good morning. We do have Ms. Jones present. Is Mr. Stephanie present? Um, it does not appear that he's present at this time. Man, this is your objection to a child support. Yeah. Review is that. What we, is the situation? Um, we are currently residing together, and I didn't know like if there was a way to have it be lowered or or whatever. I think um, our caseworker was Tara Spillane, and she said that there might be a way to reduce it to where it would just cover the Medicaid um, costs. Like if, if we for would the court, be... For the court, do you have any information on this matter? Parties are residing together. It sounds they like are there residing is... together. If the child is on Medicaid, I um, think we could potentially do a stipulation with the parties to... Huh. All right, I do think if the parties are residing together, uh, but there is aid, we could certainly just deviate down to the medical. Any issue with that? No, you're not. All right, ma'am, is that your request? Um, for Yeah, for the time being, I would like to try to do that, yeah. Okay, obviously, if there's a change and you are not residing together, that needs to be reported. Do you understand that? Yes, yes. All right, so we will uh, prepare a new recommendation that is simply, uh, since the parties are residing together, um, simply addresses the medical given the current assistance. Any questions, ma'am? Uh, not particularly, and I'm sorry that he's been here. We literally were just talking. He's having trouble even getting on. So that's okay. He, he's the payer, and you're making this agreement. So I, I don't think I need him here. Um, as and you've testified that he's you are residing together. So I'm here. Oh, okay. Oh, I've been here. All right. Just, I don't know, Mr. Steffi. Yes. Oh, sir, do you have any objection to uh, steps we're taking? No. Is it true that the two of you are residing together? Yeah, I mean, we've been together, I mean, since 2000. I mean, for almost like right. 10 plus years living together, so. All right. Okay, we will make that uh, change in the child support recommendation then. That will be mailed out to the parties. Thank you both for okay. appearing at those. Thank yes, you. Can you hear me yeah. okay? Yes, I can. All right. This is your objection to a child support modification. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And what is your reasoning for objecting? Um, I believe that it was too much. The, uh, when they... Sorry, I can't find words. <laughs> Um, the amount that they came up with was, I believe, it's too much. I'm not trying to cripple the man. Well, do you I believe answer. it was improperly calculated, or I just that amount is? I think it's a little too high. All right. Why do you believe it's too high? Um, he does. He does have only one job. Um, it's just it's, it seems like a lot. All right. Is it accurate that so it was based on him having about 65 overnights with the kids? Yeah, more or less. All 
Does he provide anything else outside of that uh, financially to the children? Um, the main health care. I have Medicaid as a secondary to cover some of the higher co-pays for the girls. Um, and he regularly sends them money through cash app, like $20, $40 weekly, bi-weekly. And what do you uh, feel is an appropriate amount per child? Um, the girls and I discussed it. Um, and we feel between three and 300, 350 per child seems a little more fair. All right, well, given uh, mom's testimony on regarding this matter, her request to reduce the amount of support, her testimony that dad does provide some direct payments to the children, as well as insurance, I will grant the request and make the support at 350 per child plus the ordinary medical. Any questions from the front of no, Your Honor. All right, thank you. That change will be made and sent out to the both of you, ma'am. Thank you. Or DC. We have Ms. Peel present now. I'm here, Your Honor. All right, so this matter was set for an objection to a support review. In speaking with Mr. War, he indicates that the two of you have had some discussions regarding changes in custody. Is that correct, ma'am? Yes. All right, have you reached an agreement? Uh, we agreed upon uh, mediation. All right, you want to try to go to mediation and see if you can reach an agreement there. Is that correct, ma'am? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Right. Mr. War, anything that you want to say, or and are you in agreement with Attempting mediation? Yes, and there's nothing more I have to say. I think I said it earlier. All right, thank you. So as to the support objection, then that would be dismissed, but we will do a referral uh, for the parties to attend mediation. If you don't reach an agreement in mediation, then you would have to file a motion regarding parenting time. Any questions? Right. Yeah, when do I start paying child support? When the order becomes effective, is the order effective at this point? Not yet. It would go retroactive to, I believe, the proof of service, but it wouldn't be entered into our system until the judge signs it and we have to return the order. All right. So there'll be some paperwork that has to happen, sir, and then it will uh, come into effect. Okay. That's all I needed to know. I thought it was already in effect and I was already a month behind. And that's the only reason why I asked. And that's it. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll do that right. referral for mediation. Thank you. Right, thank you, sir. Parties are present. Please unmute and identify yourself for the record. Brittany Zazadney. Jason McGovern. All right. Thank you. We're here today on a front of the court's request to address custody, parent time, and support. Um, Looking at this file, I do have some questions regarding uh, whether or not we are in the right uh, venue for this matter, and we have the right procedure. So, Mr. McGovern, are you on a birth certificate or an affidavit of parentage? Uh, no, I'm not, but there was a prior termination of rights through CPS for James that I maintained my uh, parental rights to him through back in when he was born in 2020. And that was settled in August of 21, I believe. So parenting, the parenting has been established through that. All right. Where was that out of? Uh, Single County. It was through Judge Cooper, Your Honor. So I'm confused. So you said your rights were terminated My, no they um cps got involved when james was born i'm on the sor so they did so we went through that but my rights were not terminated i did keep my rights to the, the boys all right i didn't see that was that referenced in your filing that there was a prior case 
Yes, sir. There it is. And ma'am, would you agree that paternity was established through that case? Yeah, I, I do agree. All right, that was my question whether or not paternity was previously established, because if not, then we might not be in the correct location to deal with this. Uh, but if there was that prior determination, then I think we are okay where we're at. And either way, ma'am, do you um, agree that he is the father of the children? Yes. All right. So as to custody and parenting time, uh, do the parties have any agreements on those issues? Mr. McGovern? Yes, sir, we do. Um, I have them every Monday, Tuesday until school starts. And then it'll be going to every other weekend. All right. So currently you have them Monday night? Uh, yeah, so I get them Monday night, Tuesday actually, night, and take well, them back once. Like actual, let's get your actual times. What time do they come to you? I usually pick them up by noon Monday and then drop them off by noon Wednesday. Okay. And you're saying when neither kid is in school right now? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And then when school yep. starts up, Bray will obviously be in school, and more than likely J James will as well. So it'll be going to every other weekend. Okay. What time are the planned exchanges for those weekends? Uh, um, we haven't okay. set them up. We haven't really gotten that far. It's pretty much been like we have it set up for the summer and then dealing with that when it comes. All right. Uh, Ma'am, do you agree that that is the agreement? Yes. And in the summer, he gets them like once or for a week at some point. Yeah, we're talking about doing week. like mid late August. I'll take him for a week before school starts and then it'll switch after that. All right. So, in addition to the Monday to Wednesday, you'll also get one full week in the summer for 2024. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Do you have any thoughts about the following summers after that? Are you going to follow the standard schedule, which is kind of a shared time after that? Yeah. During the summer, uh, I wouldn't mind doing it every week, but obviously that can't happen during the school year. So. And ma'am, as far as when we get to next summer, 2025, what are your thoughts on his time for that summer? Um, he's fine to take him week for a week. Okay. And what about holidays? I'm in are you guys are you gonna follow uh, holidays or are you gonna make your own agreement? We said we were gonna do every other holiday. All right. Are you gonna make that on your own or do you wanna follow the court's schedule? The court has a specific schedule that does do or alternates the holidays between the parties. Um I'm okay with that or we can make our own. It doesn't really matter to me. Yeah, I mean it hasn't really been an issue lately so like i'm gonna have them for easter and then she'll have them for you know mother's day and then the fourth of july all right well my, so my question is that you simply want to stick with your own pattern that you're doing then or follow the court schedule uh i think we're okay with doing our own pattern we seem to be in agreement for the most part so okay. there hasn't been a whole lot of issue lately on either side all right all right so i'm going to put you under oath first mr mcgovern would you please raise your right hand you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth yes sir all right sirs one thing i didn't address previously though are the parties doing joint legal custody or sole legal custody for miss zazny I believe we're doing joint. All right. So, ma'am, as to legal custody, what is your position on the legal custody, which is making the major decisions for the children, things like school and medical care? I normally take care of that. All right. Well, taking care of it and then having joint, you know, they're two different things. So one party may normally do that, but what joint legal means is that the two of you have to have that discussion on those issues. 
sole legal would mean you don't have to have those discussions on those issues and it would be your call. Are you requesting sole legal or joint? Joint. Okay. All right. So then back to you, Mr. McGovern. Um, are you asking this court to enter an order that grants the parties joint legal custody and primary physical custody with mom? Yes, sir. And you would have pairing time um, currently Monday at noon. This is approximate, approximately Monday at noon till Wednesday at noon as well as one week during the summer of 2024. And then when the 2024 school year begins, you would have every other weekend. And you would also then in the 2025 summer start having every other week in the summer. Is that your agreement? Uh, no, it'd be going back to the weekly visit during the summer. The bi -week, the every other weekend is basically just for the school year. And then right. when they're not every in school, other... it'll go back to two days a week when they're not in school. So you're saying for summer of 2025, you just want the Monday to Wednesday? Yeah. When they're not in school, Monday to Wednesday is fine. Okay. All right. So it'll stay Monday to Wednesday throughout the summer, future summers. Would you still have one week, though, where you would exercise every summer in the future? Uh, yeah. All right. So we'll get Monday to Wednesday every week in the summer with the ability to have an additional full week in the summer during the school year right. every other weekend. Right. And then your holidays as the two of you agree. Is that correct? Yeah. And do you feel this agreement is in the best interest of the children? Yes, yes sir. And sir, you're acknowledging that you are the father of the children also. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. All right, ma'am. Would you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And are you asking this court to enter a stipulated order that gives parties joint legal custody and you the primary physical custody? Yes. And you would agree that at this time, parenting time for Mr. McGovern would be every Monday at approximately noon to Wednesday at approximately noon? When the school year starts and during the school year, he would have every other weekend. Yes. Also in the summers, he would be entitled to one additional week. Is that correct? Yes. And you're also asking that you do holidays as the parties agree. Is that correct? That is correct. And are you acknowledging that Mr. McGovern is the father of the children? That's correct. <laughs> and you believe this agreement is in the best interest of the children? I do. All right. Thank you. So we will also prepare a child support recommendation based on the agreement. Um, in front of the court, do you need any information from the parties? Yes, we need both of their financial information. Okay. So you should have been sent uh, a packet to fill out with financial information. Have you received that? I have that. Mr. McGovern? I don't believe so. I'll look through what I have. All right, well, we'll, we'll just resend that out, and you need to complete that within 21 days. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Anything additional from front of the court? No, Your Honor. All right, thank you. You're both set, and you can sign off. Yes, Your Honor. The other party presence. All right, I do see an individual on a telephone number who is muted. We're unmuted. Hello. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'm here. All right. I can barely hear you. I don't know if you're talking quietly. Can you hear me, Your Honor? I can hear you good, Mr. Garza. I apologize. Is that better? My speaker on my cell phone is not working properly. I apologize. I don't have a landline. Can you hear me at all? I, I can better? hear you a little bit. I don't know how good of a record you're making, but okay. All right. So, Mr. Garz, I will. Yes, Your Honor. What is the status of this matter, sir? Um, 
far as what? Uh, the well, divorce? Do the two of you have any comments regarding custody, parenting time, and support? No, we've, we can figure it out ourselves. Um, I believe she wasn't requesting uh, child support, as far as I know. All right. Well, do you have any agreement at this time as to how you're handling custody and parenting time? Yes, I'm, that's fine as long as she's okay with the way it's going. Yes, Your Honor, I'm fine with it. I agree. Well, well, how is it going? So what's the agreement? Are you sharing custody? What's the parenting time? Yes, we share. Yes, custody. we're sharing custody. Are two of you residing together right now or residing separately? Um, I've been back and forth. My mom is very sick in uh, Grand Blank, and I have been spending a lot of time with her, taking care of her. She's been in and out of the hospital, but I do reside at in Mount in uh, Gaylord still. Are you planning to change residence anytime soon, sir? Uh, once the divorce is final, we were going to figure out that situation. And um, and at that point, I believe my daughter said she would come with me. And then uh, she could, you know, she can go see her mother whenever she wanted to. I have no problem with that. And That's fine. I agree. All right. Well, I think what I'm going to do is just let the parties have a little more communication and get a little further along as to where they're headed with this matter, since they are still residing together at this time. It doesn't seem to be an immediate need for any specific order, and the parties certainly seem to be like they are working together. Um, so we're going to adjourn this matter out about 45 to 60 days to see where you're at then. Is it okay. true that there is... Any assistance, any state assistance or federal assistance or any aid that the parties are receiving? Uh, food stamps and Medicaid. Medicaid. And I'm 70% uh, some, rated V8. That's my income so that at the moment. Impact, that'll impact um, you know, the ability to opt out of support. Um, you, can't completely opt, you can't opt out if there is assistance that is being received, just so you're aware of that. Okay, so what? Go ahead, Scotty. Your, okay, thank you. Your Honor, he's, the majority of his time is in Grand Blank. He's very seldom here in the home. How does our, um, as far as spousal support in, in the future, is that another court date or is that just regarding spousal support, support would have to be in front of the court doesn't handle um, spousal support, just child support. So that would okay, be in Honor, front of the judge. You. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. And yes, that's fine. All right. So we're going to send you guys a new date here down the road uh, to see where we're at with residing together and everything like that. So we will reschedule this matter for about 45 to 60 days. Your Honor. Yes. Are we going to send the information to the North Metal Drive or is that where they're, where do they want to receive mail, I guess, to make sure they both receive the notice? Okay. Thank you. So Mr. Garza, where do you want your mail going to? 507. Okay. Do you intend to live in Gaylord, sir, or are you living somewhere else when this is done? I, be, I tend to live in Gaylord. Um, I'm trying to, as soon as I get, get my mother's health under control, um, then I plan on moving back up north. All right, thank yeah, you. Moving back up, right. staying so, there permanently. For the next hearing, Ms. Garza, I don't know if you've got a different way to connect, but um, it would be helpful if you find a, a different way to connect so that we can, <coughs> so we can hear you much better and yeah. make sure the record is I All right. Thank you both for appearing. You will receive a new date. Thank you, Thank you Your so Honor. The parties can please unmute and let me know if you can hear me okay. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. This is a friend of the court uh, status hearing. Friend of the court, you're looking to see if the parties are 
residing together at this time? Yes, the friend of the court received a referral from the Office of Child Support in January of 2024, indicating the parties are no longer residing together, and there are two additional children that would need to be added for a calculation of support. So we need to verify if they are receiving state assistance and where they're residing. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Gino, so you're the plaintiff, so I'll start with you first. Do the two of you reside together? We do not, no, sir. And as of when? January, or no, when was that, Lenny? Uh, 2019. No, I'm sorry, January of 2020. Okay. This matter has one child, Dominic. Do you have other children together? Yes, sir. Okay. How many other children do you have together? Two others. And Mr. Gianosa is the father of those children? Yes, sir. Are you receiving any assistance, ma'am? No, sir. The two of you have a parenting time schedule or anything in place? No, sir. We haven't needed one. The The kids, if I may say, um, the kids basically just go back and forth as they choose. They're primarily with Leonard full-time at the moment. The youngest uh, is staying with me during school hours. So they, we're not divorced. Um, so there's no, you know, the court order was done as a result of previous state assistance received and a need to establish paternity. Um, but this this wasn't um, initiated by either of us, and you know, they're, they're we we take care of them pretty well, just when you know as needed. I don't know how to word what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Fine, all right, Mr. Gianosa, do you agree yep. that uh, there are two other children besides Dominic? Yes, sir. And you are the father, correct? Y yes, sir. Two of you are not residing together. Is that true? That is true, sir. And do you, you receive any assistance? No, sir. Front of the court, is there any other information you need? Just to verify what their address is then, okay. if possible. All right, can we get updated addresses then? Front of the court, anything additional that you need? No, we would just need to add the children as they're not receiving assistance. I think <coughs> any further action would be taken. Okay, all right, so we will do that, add the children to the case, but we're not going to uh, make any support changes or new recommendations. All right. Any questions from the parties? No, sir. no, sir. All right. Thank you both for appearing. It does conclude your matter. Thank you so much. How do we get off of here now? And Mr. Caswell, can you hear me okay? Yes. All right. Parties are back in front of the court. It looks like you went to mediation. At that mediation, you reached an agreement regarding parenting time. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. The mediation agreement itself didn't address uh, custody. So it doesn't address what Mr. Caswell's parenting time would be, but it doesn't address whether or not the parties are agreeing to share um, either joint legal custody or sole legal custody for one of the parties. Um, had the two of you discussed that issue? Um, no. All right. Well, ma'am, what are your thoughts on legal custody? So legal custody is different than physical custody. Legal custody is uh, the parties need to communicate and work together on major decisions, things like schooling and medical issues. What is your request regarding legal custody? Um, I would share that 50-50. All right. Mr. Caswell, are you in agreement with that? Yes. Okay. All right, so given that, um, ma'am, do you think there are any other issues that need to be addressed at this time? Um, is physical custody going to be addressed today or? Well, there's a parenting time agreement. So based on that mediation agreement, it would look that you have the primary physical custody and that you've agreed to parenting time, uh, a parenting time schedule at this time and that you would also 
in the future discuss any changes and go back to mediation if you can't reach any agreements. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. All right. So do you think anything else has, needs to be addressed then regarding the physical custody? No, I don't. All right. Mr. Caswell, how about you as to the physical custody? Uh, no, I do not. All right. So what I'm going to do then is put the parties under oath and ask some questions. Ma'am, I'll start with you. Would you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. All right. So, ma'am, is it true that you went to a mediation and reached an agreement regarding uh, parenting time for Mr. Caswell? Yes. And are you asking the court to adopt that agreement? Yes. Are you also agreeing to joint legal custody? Yes. And do you feel this agreement is in the best interest of your child? Yes, I do. Thank you. Mr. Caswell, would you please raise your right hand? You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. And sir, is it true that you attended a mediation and reached an agreement regarding parenting time? Yes. And are you asking the court to adopt that agreement? Yes. And are you also agreeing to joint legal custody? Yes. And do you feel that this agreement is in the best interest of the child? Yes. All right. Thank you. So given that uh, information, the court will issue an order granting the parties joint legal custody, primary physical with the plaintiff and the parenting time agreement as outlined in the mediation agreement. Also, a child support recommendation would be prepared. Do you have any questions, Ms. Sutter? No, I don't. Mr. Caswell, any questions? No. All right. Thank you both for appearing. You will get a copy of the court's order. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Smart, if you could please unmute. Let me know if you can hear me okay. I can hear you. All right. And Mr. Fournier, if you could unmute, let me know if you can hear me okay. All right. So you need to unmute. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right, okay. Ms. Martin, we're here. You have filed a motion to change custody. Is that correct? Yes. And what change are you seeking to make? Uh, I'm requesting the court modification considering, uh, I believe, the best interests of Carter, Carter and Carter, geez, Carter and Carly, uh, full legal and physical custody, ensure their well-being and safety while allowing Brandon to retain his rotating weekends for visitations. I want to emphasize my openness to Brandon continuing involvement in the children's lives while I acknowledge his desire to be present. I must address concerns about ensuring consistent care and stability for the children. Ms. Martin, I just want to know what schedule you are proposing. Uh, every other weekend, um, and I'm still open to if Brandon has time available and wants them at appropriate times, I will yeah. allow it. All right, sir, are you in agreement with that change or not in agreement? I'm not in agreement. I would like to keep my 50-50 custody and parenting time that we have going right now. It seems to be working good. Okay. And ma'am, what are you... Um, so what the court has to focus on is what has changed since the last order. I think the last order became effective in December. November. So are you indicating, ma'am, that there have been Incidences since that time frame? Yeah. And concerns that you have? Yes. All right. 50 50 started. Sorry, it kind of glitched. I didn't hear all what you said. Yeah. So, just in general, can you give an example of what has happened that causes the concern since that order, since the 50 50 started? Oh, yeah. Um, during parenting time with Brandon, uh, he's neglected to leave them with his mother. Uh, he's denied me parenting time. Things that he's testified uh, during he's, during his testimony, uh, everything he said during it has been the complete opposite. Uh, what does that mean? So I'm looking to say, see, okay, what's happened since that order that has been a change in circumstances or is proper cause to revisit the order? Okay. So, Brandon, the safety of Carly in a non-proper car seat, that's an issue. She's in a booster seat when she's not qualified. She's not height and weight requirement reached for that. 
Um, that was a concern. Brandon, when I mentioned it, Brandon accused me of harassing him. Uh, communication, Brandon is not communicating with me at all about the kids. Uh, their hygiene has been a huge issue. Diaper rashes has been an ongoing issue. Uh, Brandon still has not taken part in any of their appointments, any interaction uh, with Carly's preschool. Uh, and literally, there's just no involvement with him. He just He's left the kids with his mother is what he's done. All right. I mean, I'm not sure that's going to get you to proper cause or change of circumstances, but we don't have enough time, I guess, to go through enough to give you the opportunity to present your argument. So I will set the matter for a evidentiary hearing. I will set it for May 29th at 1 p.m. And that is a in-person hearing. So you both need to be present in person for that hearing. Any questions, Ms. Martin? Ms. Martin, do you have any questions? No. All right, Mr. Fournier, do you have any questions? No, it's May what? Just so I can get the day off work and everything. May 29th at 1 okay. p.m. Okay. All right, thank you. I'll thank see you. you both here in person on that day. Thank you. Hello. Counselor, please place their appearance on the record. Um, I can do for, I'm representing the defendant, Gary Roper. Um, referee, I'm looking at his connection. It appears he's not yet con connected to audio. So I just want to make okay. sure my client is present in the courtroom, but he is appearing via Zoom. Thank you. Mr. Roper, can you hear me okay? Uh, yes, sir, I can. Oh, good. Thank you. And Ms. Capeller, can you hear me okay? Yes. And do you have an attorney, ma'am? No, I'm representing myself. Okay. All right, we're here today on a couple of matters. There was a show cause against Mr. Roper, as well as then a referral from a ex parte request. You have our response, right, referee? I do. Okay. And I don't know if the court is aware, um, Mr. Roper has filed to um, have the matter transferred to Tennessee. Did the court get put on notice of that? I did not know that as of yet. Okay, I can show you, I can share with you the documents that's being handled. It's already filed. Miss, um, the, the plaintiff has been served. Um, there was an attempt, to tr there was, we're trying to um, get it registered over in Tennessee. The, the minor child has resided in Tennessee for I think just about nine years. Is there a hearing date on that issue? Um, I, I, so it's handled by one of our co our counselor our councils in Tennessee, and I was looking through the court file this morning. I'm not a hundred percent sure how Tennessee handles this, but I do know that a petition has been filed. I'm opening up the um, the Franklin Tennessee file right now. Um, I don't know necessarily that there's a hearing. That's gonna, okay. but um, the your record will show that Mr. Roper was given primary physical custody and granted the ability to take the minor child and move to Franklin or Tennessee. But I am looking to see if there. I didn't see anything about a hearing date. Mr. Roper, do you know anything about a hearing date in Tennessee? I have not been notified. Um, I. I tried to get with my Tennessee attorney this morning, but he is handling another legal matter. Um, so once that matter is resolved and I can make contact with him, I can get clarity. But until that time, there, there, there's not anything scheduled that I'm aware of. All right. Thank you. So, Ms. Capeller, um, ma'am, what are you seeking as far as parenting time? Well, um, I would like made up parenting time um, over the course of the last couple of years, even throughout this course of the last month, um, I have yet to have visitation with my child other than when I went to Tennessee for two weeks and spent with my child. I have asked um, repeatedly numerous times over the last month, can I talk with Justin tonight? Hey, what's Justin doing? Can I speak with him? And I have been given an excuse every single time. All right. 
Um, so, ma'am, do you think there's any chance of reaching an agreement regarding parenting time, or do you think at this point, given that it hasn't happened, that that's not possible? I don't think that's possible, especially with the um, defendant's reply. All of the allegations that are written in here are false, um, stating that I live a erratic lifestyle, um, that I am, well, I was told by Gary that he does not trust me and that I made Justin feel unsafe. So that is why he does not allow Justin to go ahead and come up here and visit. I do not live a sporadic lifestyle. I did live in Georgia. Um, Gary claims that Justin came and only seen me two times. Um, there's a lot of right. L here. Yes, the child right, does. Thanks, have I don't. I don't need to get into all, all the issues. Um, I just want to see where we're at procedurally with everyone's position. Um, it does appear that this matter needs an evidentiary hearing. Uh, so I will put it on the court's docket for an evidentiary hearing. We don't have a time available, though, until June 10th. Counselor, do you know if you're available June 10th, either at 9 a.m. or 1 p.m.? I'm just going to check. It's going to be in person? Is it in Well, given that your client's in Tennessee and Ms. Capeller isn't in Gaylord either, I have no objection. I have no problem with doing it by Zoom as long as the parties are okay with that. I'm fine. With June, June in, I only live an hour and a half from Gaylord, Michigan. Well, ma'am, do you want to appear in person or do it by Zoom? I can appear in person, um, but if it makes it easier on the other party, then we can go by Zoom. All right, let's do it by Zoom, just given everyone's location. And then I, I'm sorry, counsel, I missed. Are you available on the tent? I am. And what time? Well, we can either do it at nine o'clock or we can do it at one o'clock. Nine o'clock would be good. All right, so we'll set this matter then for a hearing on June 10th at nine. Uh, what if we we'll get. I, I will just, if uh, this gets registered over in Tennessee, we're just going to cancel it, right? Right. I mean, if, if that becomes an issue, then, uh, I mean, perhaps this matter would go, would be removed. But uh, I think I would still just hop on to Zoom and address that issue first if that does happen. Okay. Yeah, I think that's already been filed and it's working through. So I'm imagining that Michigan should get notified or and Michigan, I mean, the child's lived in in Tennessee for nine years. Um, the child is of age for a preference interview. So what I would do is speak to him by Zoom at 845. So Mr. Roper, you would need to make sure um, the child is available to speak to me by Zoom at 845 that morning. The minor child does and have autism, but I don't know if the court wants to okay well i'll listen to the parties then to see if they think he is of sufficient capacity to um, do a preference interview understand the situation it's different for every everyone so mr roper what are your thoughts on that um if it's a private one-on-one -on -one thing with someone he does not know the child will absolutely be terrified he will melt down um and i do not I do not see that being beneficial to anybody involved, let alone the child. It would be detrimental to the child to have him alone with a, <clears throat> someone in the legal system, being that he is he is only 11 and he is autistic. He's high functioning. However, he's 11 and he is naive. And um, I, being special needs, I don't, I don't see that as, as a very good idea. What if he had um, like a support person at school? Because if my client's going to be jumping on a hearing at nine, nine o'clock from an 845 child interview, um, any negative reactions that he would have would need to be addressed. So maybe we have a support person that's present with the minor child during the interview. Would that help Mr. Roper? Um, I could reach out to his um, everyone that supports him under his Title 504 service agreement with the school system and see what they are able to do. Um, but I, I can't speak for them Ms. as they have I mean, Ms. Capeller and see her position. Ms. Capeller, what is your position on the interview of the child? Well, I have a couple of issues with uh, a lot of things on that. Um, and I want to know what the position is going to be on me being able to speak to Justin or see him until then, because um, he does have some right, break. So my, my question for you is, 
my question for you is what are your thoughts on me interviewing him? I don't want to do something that's negative. And I don't know if he's, you know, given the statements, if he would understand what the preference interview is about. Um, so what, what's your position? If you agree that you shouldn't be interviewed, then we won't do that. I don't believe, um, I mean, if Justin agrees to it, but I do agree with Taylor or Gary Roper. Um, Justin would have um, a meltdown. I don't know okay. that he understand what is even going on or being asked of him. All right. Well, given the party's uh, statements, then I think um, I will not do an interview um, given the situation. So as, and, and referee, just as for parenting time, um, I think the biggest concern is Miss um, Capeller taking the minor child somewhere. So if she wanted to arrange to come and have a meeting up in Tennessee, I, I don't think that's ever been a problem for my client. Just the idea of taking him with the, the minimal contacts is of concern. So we're not, he's not trying to keep her away or anything of that sort. It's just trying to make sure that he is able to handle it. Came from me. All right. Well, I'll, I'll let the parties handle those issues. I mean, I, I can't get into all that right now. So, you know, there is an order in place. Um, if it's not followed, then there can certainly be readdressed. Any future parenting time violations can be addressed at that upcoming hearing. So I will see the parties then on June 10th at 9 a.m. by Zoom. Yes, I can. Can you hear me okay, Your Honor? I can. Thank you. And counsel, if you could please place your appearance on the record. Yes, good morning. Jennifer Zalesnik appearing with and on behalf of the defendant, Gary Roper, who's present via Zoom remotely. Thank you. So we're scheduled for a couple of different matters today. There was a parenting time matter and a show cause matter, as well as then a motion regarding jurisdiction. Um, counsel, is there anything initial that you want to say on these matters? Um, I did attach on my motion, the jurisdiction motion, I attached the order out of Tennessee. Um, the Tennessee court has uh, domesticated the custody and parenting time order, but did not wish to transfer jurisdiction in light of the pending show cause and parenting time complaint. Um, but the minor child has resided in the state of Tennessee for the last nine years. So I'm hoping we could get that oh. issue resolved so that the matter can be transferred over to the, to the state of Tennessee to address custody and parenting time matters. I would agree. Tennessee certainly seems like the appropriate place to handle this matter and handle this case, given the time the child has been there. I guess my, I do have some concern though, as to um, the delay that that would involve and that mom apparently is not having any contact. Is that correct? Um, the, she, I mean, just for, you know, she, she alleged over the, the past three years that she hasn't had um, parenting time or has been denied parenting time, but um, proofs will show referee that mom just isn't involved. It's just an unfortunate situation. Um, even in, in November of 2022, she did go to the state of Tennessee and visited where she stayed with my client in his home. Um, then in, I, I'm, I would have to refer to my client, he traveled to the state of Michigan for a death in the family. And prior to even Mr. Roper and the minor child arriving to the funeral, which was related to um, Ms. Capeller's family member, she had left. So it's just the contacts are sparse and sporadic. This child has autism. And to expect a child with autism to go without any contact or any relationship with somebody, and then all of a sudden you want to come in and be all, you know, a, a active participant to the extent that you wish is just not fair. Um, he, he doesn't know Miss Capeller and what he does know about Miss Capeller, he's not comfortable going. Um, Mr. Roper has suggested that she come and stay in the state of Tennessee with him and under with him, not necessarily under a supervised situation, but just to, you know, let this child be comfortable with her. But she has refused. Um, her parenting time complaint on its face is uh, just negligible. And when you look at what a parenting time complaint consists of, number one is the parent has to actually try to exercise parenting time. In this case, Ms. Capeller has only been to Tennessee one time in, in the past two years, notably, where she came and visited and stayed with Mr. Roper. Um, 
if she wants a relationship with this child, she needs to step up. She needs to be a parent, an involved parent. She can't just be a sporadic and sparse parent. And if she chooses to do that, there's no way we can send this child across state lines with somebody with autism that doesn't know the person that she's he's going with. And so we're asking, you know, we we have the Tennessee motion, you know, we have the Tennessee matter going to be pending as soon as this gets resolved. But Mr. Roper is asking for parenting time not to be extended outside of the state of Tennessee and to be where he can help if if needed. Because this child has extreme emotional responses when he's uncomfortable. And those emotional responses, Ms. Capella is not familiar with. And she does not know how to deal with it if he does have that type of response. And Mr. Roper is not comfortable putting him in a situation where that response might happen. Um, so her parenting time complaint on its face is, is in fact, it's not factually correct. So I'm asking referee that you dismiss this. Um, there's no evidence that Ms. Capeller gave to show that she actually attempted to exercise parenting time. Over the past three years, she has had a total, I think it was seven different numbers. I can, ref I'm just referring my notes, but she has had multiple different numbers um, and very minimal contact. Um, so four, at least four separate phone numbers um, where she wasn't keeping Mr. Roper notified where she was living since the entry of the custody and parenting time order. Ms. Roper has lived in the state of Georgia, has lived in the state of Pennsylvania, Colorado, and now Michigan. Um, he, frankly, this is just not a situation where enforcement is appropriate but modification of the current parent custody and parenting time order, however, is appropriate. So I'm again, I'm asking for the court to deny her parenting time complaint. I'm asking that the court not find Mr. Roper in contempt um, associated with the show cause and transfer jurisdiction of this matter to the state of Tennessee. This child has absolutely no connections to the state of Michigan outside of Ms. Capeller, who is a very sporadic, if that, parent. All right, thank you. And I would agree that you know, the current order that was put in place back in 2015 was the uh, Segal County long distance order, which typically only contemplates parties living more than two hours, but less than five hours apart. And certainly given the distance, the terms of that order wouldn't make sense for the distance here. So uh, the parties are clearly in a position where something needs to be addressed. Uh, and I certainly understand the concerns of jumping right back to that much contact either way. Um, given the absence, Ms. Capella, I'm going to I'm going to give you a chance to speak and make some comments and statements and arguments. All right, ma'am, what would you like to say uh, regarding these matters? So, in particular, you know, your parenting time um, violation complaint, as well yes. as a request to move the state move this case to Tennessee. Yes. So everything that's written in here, actually, to um, against me is false um, and very hurtful. Um, the child does know who I am. The child does talk to me on the phone. The child's last phone interaction with me was in August of 23. We FaceTimed. Um, anytime before that, we have FaceTimed. Justin has expressed he does want to come up here and visit with me. Um, and then his dad is in the background and says, well, we have to talk about it. Um, bringing up that I've lived in Colorado, Georgia, Pennsylvania, now Michigan, and all of that, all of that is irrelevant um, in our original order number, I believe it was line seven, um, the defendant went ahead and consented to me moving out of state. I went to Georgia in 2017. He was well aware of that. Within a week of me moving into my home in Georgia, he was down there with Justin. Justin visited me for a couple of weeks. He was there regularly on all of his school breaks and everything else. It wasn't until 2019 when Taylor asked me if he and his dad could come with a small trailer to move me back to Tennessee because Justin was asking questions on why isn't mom and dad together, when's mom coming back and everything else. I said no. Fast forward, I came back to Michigan. I was in Michigan for a while. Yes, my stepfather went ahead and passed away. I told Taylor the dates that I was going to be up here for him and everything else. I was in Georgia at that time. I had rented a vehicle and I came up with my cousin. I had a job and everything else. I had a time frame. I went ahead and told him the dates that I was going to be up here. I was up for the funeral. I was with my mom during everything. Um, then I went ahead and came back down. They came up at a different time outside of the dates I had given him I was going to be here. 
I have asked numerous times. Yes, I've had multiple phone numbers, but I've also contacted him through those phone numbers. There's been multiple times where I have sent messages and not gotten any replies. And then it was, oh, no, an excuse. During COVID, I asked if Justin can come up and visit and everything else as well. And I was told no because of COVID and it was unsafe. But apparently it was safe enough for the defendant and his father to go and play Santa Claus in the schools for the children. Then fast forward to me being in um, Pennsylvania. Yes, I was there for four months. I was working. Um, anywhere I've been, I've always had a job, a house. Um, I'm not some, you know, parent that, you know, like they're saying is sporadic and unsafe and everything else. Never been to jail. I don't do drugs. I've always tried to make in contact. I have sent my child gifts and everything else. His birthday gift is on the way. I have asked since January numerous times to speak to Justin since making the complaints and everything else. And I have yet to talk to him on the phone. I've either been given a reason why or just not an answer back. I have asked twice that, hey, we need to go ahead and discuss summer and Justin coming up to see me. Please let me know a time that works for you to discuss that. I have not gotten a reply on that. I asked if I could speak to Justin to ask him what he would like for his birthday and how everything's been going. I got a, a reply of Justin said he would like Godzilla stuff or a, uh, an Amazon gift card and he'll shop for himself. There's a period when the defendant's um, identity was stolen and he had gotten a new phone and changed his number, but did not, not tell me. So for months, I was calling and texting a number that didn't work. So I had to reach out to his mother on Facebook. The claims of me being down there and only spending a, a, a maximum 45 minutes with my child is untrue. My child was in school during the time. Why would I go ahead and drive 13 hours, stay with my ex and, you know, his family just to spend 45 minutes with my son. I had multiple pictures and videos of me and my son goofing around, having fun, making cookies and everything else. Me and the defendant and our son went out to lunch. I paid for that. We also went on a 45 minute drive out to a place to go hiking for two hours. So I have tried to go ahead and stay and see my son be in contact and everything else. I have asked numerous times. The last phone conversation with the defendant, I was told that I am not wanted or needed as a mother. And he's going to do what he needs to do to keep Justin safe. I, I kind of want to get a little bit of a history then, ma'am. Um, so how long have you been back in Michigan? I've been back in Michigan since August of 22. Okay. And when was the last time that you saw your son in person? In November of 22. In which my son does remember and everything because he asked me specifically to bring down a specific kind of clay that we go ahead and use that you can bake in the oven and harden. You said your last phone contact was August of 23. Is that right? Yes. When I do try calling, sometimes it will go right to a voicemail or say, oh, Sorry, this phone, you know, cannot be um, connected. And then I send messages, no responses. Or then I get a response a day later. Oh, Justin said he doesn't want to talk to you. Or, oh, he's doing okay. Um, or, oh, he's over at Granny's. When was the last time you had summer parenting time? That I what? Exercised summer parenting time. Um, that would be when I was in Georgia. Yeah, what year was that? The summers, um, 2018 and 2019. Then when right, I came so back. Have, so you did have some in-person summer parenting time in 2018 and 2019? Yes. And then what happened in 2020? You said because of COVID, they, you didn't allow it? Yep, he didn't allow it. And then I've been told that he was going to ranger camp. And one summer, he just didn't want to go anywhere. So you didn't have any summer parenting time in 2020? 2021, 2022, or 2023. Is that right? Correct. And I have asked. Did you, file, I any, did you file any motions prior to this motion or not? Have I what? Filed any motions prior to this motion? As far no, as the I, parenting time issue? I have not, and that's my fault, and I should have. I shouldn't have let it gotten this far. Okay. Counselor, are you of the position right now that even phone contact is not appropriate? Um, it causes a pretty significant response for this child. 
um, he's a functioning, he's functioning autism, but the emotional responses are pretty extreme. You think if he had, if it weren't so sporadic that I think that it's Mr. Right. Roper could work with, with I don't mean my, Ms. Capeller, I can't have you interrupting other people, okay? They didn't interrupt you. You're always going to get your chance to have something to say, but you can't just jump in, okay? All right. All right. So, Sorry about that, Counsel. And speaking with Mr. Roper, he is absolutely willing and able to facilitate a relationship between the minor child and Ms. Capeller, but it has to be something that is consistent and it cannot be something that's sporadic. This child does not do well under those conditions. Um, definitely like a stable, consistent contact would be good. If she wanted to come up to Tennessee to visit, I think that would be appropriate. Um, and I don't think that Mr. Roper would have any issue with that, with short stints of visits. But to send this child away from home, away from what he's used to, away from what he's accustomed to doing his daily routine would be something of not absolutely not in his best interests. But Mr. Roper is with this child every single day. Um, if he's not with him, he's with his grandparents or at school. So the situation that Ms. Capella is asking for is just not something that's workable for him. But Mr. Roper is absolutely willing and able to facilitate with that. But it just has to be a slow progress. Um, and it cannot include sending him out of the home and away for a long, any period of time for that matter, without her, without some sort of adjustment period. And that's something that Mr. Roper is, is wanting to, to proceed with in the state of Michigan or in the state of Tennessee. Sorry. Thank you. Ms. Capeller, what do you have to say regarding the request to have this matter heard in Tennessee? Well, as far as the custody and, and everything else down in there, um, with everything, I'm just wondering why since Justin, yes, he's been there nine years, why it's taken all of a sudden me making a complaint for him to file wanting custody down there in Tennessee. Um, as far as me, you know, Day again, the sporadic parenting time. Again, I have tried multiple, 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 multiple times. And I am being told something different. I am being told on the phone one thing. The way my son interacts with me on the phone, there is no hardships. There is no strains or anything else. He does want to come up here. He knows exactly who I am and everything else. If the child does have all of these issues, which I have never witnessed, he's never had an issue transitioning to my home before him to visit in Georgia, never had an issue and everything else. Um, saying I don't know how to handle that is untrue. I do have another child that has autism and everything that's been in and out of institutions. So I am actually highly trained with ABA therapy and all of those um, and interventions and things like that. Um, so why isn't Justin involved in any ABA therapies to help with transitioning and stuff like that? And if he is, why have I not been involved with that? Why have I not been contacted by anything regarding, you know, um, IEPs and any of that? Well, Your Honor, I can respond to that. <laughs> not to belabor the situation, but... For one, the transfer to Tennessee. Mr. Roper was under the impression that that 2015 order did accomplish that. Now, I understand ignorance isn't a defense, but he did under he did believe that it was transferred pursuant to that order. And when she filed in Michigan, that's when he realized that there was this issue. So he has retained two lawyers, one here in the state of Michigan and one over there in the state of Tennessee to resolve that issue. Regarding her involvement and Mr. Roper's involvement, Mr. Roper is involved every single day with this child. He attends every school event, every IEP meeting, and, and assists the minor child with every single aspect of his life. Miss Ro Miss Capeller, however, is just not involved. It's not because Mr. Roper is not allowing her to be involved or interfering with that involvement. She's just not. And for somebody to say that, oh, I'm trained in this and I'm trained in that and I know how to do this and I know how to do that, well, then show it. And then Mr. Roper will gladly facilitate that relationship. However, she has not shown it. We cannot have this child. And any kind of communication that she does have with him is because Mr. Roper's prepared him for that. She doesn't know what's going on behind the scenes. And if she understands the aspects of this child's autistic diagnosis, then she understands that you just can't jump in and just, oh, like, oh, the last four years just haven't happened. 
You're just going to, you know, I'm your mom and that's just the way it is. That's not how it is. And if she's got that training, then she should be fully aware. And those comments are just absolutely ridiculous to me. So I, it, Reverie, I'm just asking, we just need to get this under control. If Ms. Capella wants parenting time, fine. But the matter should be transferred to the state of Tennessee. The state of Michigan has nothing to do with this child. The child has nothing to do with the state of Michigan. And Ms. Capella's residencies over the last few years show evidence further that there's really not that many connections here in the state of Michigan. All of them are in the state of Tennessee. Thank you. Ms. Capella, anything else you'd like to say at this time? Um, yes, um, I would like to know why I'm not, you know, considered a significant connection being the child's mother. Um, again, yes, I am aware of my child's autism. I was down there in 2022. Um, he did not go to any IEP, no ABA meetings or anything. He was very high functioning, very intelligent, very open, communicative with me. Um, I have plenty of videos that prove that and everything else, not showing a shy child in, in, in any other way. Um, he has shown, even when I was down there visiting, much excitement and wanting to come to Michigan to see me, to see my side of the family. You can inquire of the defendant referee, but I don't necessarily think that that's important. I think you have all the facts necessary to move this case to Tennessee and deny her parenting time complaints and not find him in contempt. Thank you. All right. So in, in looking at this matter, what, does anyone else want to say, Ms. Capella? Yeah, being told on the phone by the defendant, I am not wanted or needed as a mother is, you know, out, outright just wrong and hurtful. I understand that. And certainly you have a right to some pairing time, and I think that will get resolved. It sounds like they're willing to um, address those issues, but obviously take it in a planned path with sort of uh, new introductions. I'm tasked with looking at your parenting time complaint as well as the motion to um, transfer this matter. As to the parenting time complaint, the difficulty is there's an order that's been in place that really hasn't been followed um, by the parties. The order really is not applicable to their situation given the distance. Um, but either way, it appears that there was some parenting time after the order went into place, but there was never really, again, as I indicated, a consistent planned out schedule um, there was some parenting time, according to mom, when she lived in Georgia in 2018 and 2019. No parenting time following that other than a visit that she had in November of 2022 um, to the state of Tennessee. Uh, despite all this time that had gone or that has passed and issues with parenting time, uh, this is the first parenting time complaint that was fought, filed. The parties, have, as indicated, have clearly not followed any sort of set time order. And to suddenly enforce the exact terms of that order after years upon years of it not being followed and given the situation certainly is not appropriate. Um, I don't find that Mr. Roper violated her um, without good cause, again, just given the history of how the parties have handled the matter. So I would dismiss the pairing time complaint. As to the motion, um, Clearly, dad and a child have lived in Tennessee now for numerous years, um, at about nine years. Mom has not really exercised parenting time in Michigan. Um, I don't know if at all, but it's certainly not in a long time. Has parent mom exercised any parenting time in Michigan? Mom has also had some moves out of the state of Michigan and is now back in the state of Michigan, um, not in the county that this matter originated out of. Uh, I mean, clearly at this point, the child does not have a significant connection with Michigan and I don't, and he hasn't had any parenting time with mom here to have any connection that way with the state of Michigan. Uh, evidence in this matter uh, regarding the life of the child, his care, his relationships, his schooling, uh, his special needs, all of that evidence now is uh, from witnesses that are in Tennessee, except for mom. Um, clearly, that is the more appropriate forum for the case. Um, so I would make a determination that this court uh, no longer has the exclusive continuing jurisdiction and that the appropriate forum is Tennessee and that the matter be transferred to Tennessee for further proceedings. I would hope that the parents certainly work together to get mom uh, back involved 
Uh, but obviously there will be the matter pending in Tennessee also for a determination as to what that can look like if the parties themselves cannot reach an agreement. Uh, council, any questions or anything else that you think needs to be addressed? Yep, there is a show cause that was filed by the front of the court, Your Honor. We just need to address that as well. Yes, I, I am dismissing that show cause. Ms. Capeller, any questions? Nope, I guess we will wait to hear then what will happen from Tennessee with everything so I can address my concerns with Tennessee once a court date is set for that, correct? Yes, ma'am. I think that's the appropriate uh, place to litigate this matter, so I am going to uh, grant that motion to transfer it there. Will the court be preparing that order, a referee, or? We will, yes. Okay. Um, I did have one yes, question. Um, as far as saying, you know, the original order, you know, that was back in 2015 um, with neither parties, you know, following that. I'm just wondering how um, neither parties followed that because it. I had consent to move out of the state of Michigan. What I mean is the schedule itself has never really been followed. There's been no that set forth a specific schedule and okay. that, that schedule has not been followed. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone for appearing that does conclude this matter you will get a copy of the court's order in the mail thank you okay. thank you thank you have a good day yes your honor all right we do have mr house present it's not look like the other party is signed in mr house this is your motion correct yes sir And just in general, what are you seeking to change or do, sir? Uh, I'm looking for custody of my of Riley. She's been with living with me since January. What is the present order regarding custody, if you know? Uh, with her mother. I believe all I have is legal rights, if I'm correct, and with right. visitation. Get contact with the mother recently? On and off a little bit, yes, sir. Do you know if she was aware just, of this? Uh, just the hearing other day. Yes, yeah, she was. Just the other day, she uh, agreed that she would, it would be better if, with me having custody because I've been paying for everything and she's living here with me. All right. Is there any other open cases regarding the child? I believe there's open CPS cases, yes, sir. All right. Nothing in the court system, though? Is there a case before the probate court? No, no, sir. Okay. All right. Well, unfortunately, she's not here to indicate that she's in agreement with any changes, so we'd have to set the matter for a hearing. I will set up for a hearing on our next available one hour spot is June 24th at 11 a.m. Okay. That is a in-person hearing. Um, there should be an interview also of the child. So the child should be here at 1045. So I can do a preference interview. Yes, sir. And we'll send out notice to both you and Miss Howell. Any questions, sir? Uh, nope, I'm all set. Thank uh, you. Yes. There is current support charging on this case of okay. paying um, the plaintiff. All right. So, sir, you're indicating the child is living with you full time? Yes, sir. All right. Well, given that information, I think we should abate support uh, pending any future changes. We can always um, make any changes if necessary, but at this time, I think it is appropriate to abate the support. All right, sir, any questions? Nope, I'm all set. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We'll see you back here on the 24th of June. Good morning, Your Honor. Andrew Bosser appearing with on behalf of defendant Morgan O'Rourke, now known as Morgan Westcott. Thank you. And I am here, Your Honor. 
All right. Do you have counsel appearing today, Mr. Van Wolfen? I spoke with my counsel because uh, Jill uh, left the law firm and I spoke with them and I talked with a friend of the court and they said that I shouldn't need counsel today for this. All right, then we will proceed forward. All right, friend of the court, uh, what brings this matter before the court? Um, this was a petition done by a friend of the court after a support calculation was done. Um, when that calculation was completed, we received notification that the high income threshold was exceeded and that the court could use discretion to determine if that amount should be adjusted or if um, that amount is correct. But since then, Mr. Van Wolfen has informed in front of the court that he's had a change of employment. So we would actually just be requesting that it be referred back to us for the child support recommendation with his new employer. Thank you. Um, counsel, anything that you would like to say or any questions? My, my only point, Your Honor, would be that I'd like to reserve an argument for income imputation once we determine the basis cost for the change of employment, things of that nature, uh, because if we're going from a high income to something else, I, I think that there are grounds for imputation uh, that may arise, and I'd just like to reserve that argument. I would also like to, if, if possible, to cut down on discovery to obtain copies of any information that Mr. Van Wolfen sends to the FOC, so we may review it to determine if there's an, uh, an imputation argument to be made. All right. So I mean, you certainly will have the right to that argument because anything that we prepare will be a recommendation. Um, I'm not going to order in front of the court to release those documents. You can certainly make any discovery requests that are necessary. Um, so what we will do is, Mr. Van Wolfen, you need to submit any new documentation regarding your employment. A new child support recommendation will be prepared. The parties will have the opportunity to object to that recommendation um, after it is sent out to the parties. Any questions, Mr. Van Wolfen? No, Your Honor. All right. In Mr. the meantime, Mother, any questions? Uh, yes, Your Honor. In the meantime, is our previous order going to be maintaining interim effect? I would think so, yes. Yes, so not, not any changes, correct. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Right. Um, thank more you all for appearing. It. Oh. All right. Thank you for appearing. It does conclude this matter. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a good day.